Yeah, this shit's starting to heat up now, nigga. Hip hop been playing us. They've been playing us, my niggas. Now, for some reason, a lot of truth just been coming to me. And I've been cracking these codes. You dig? Now, mind you, I ain't even thinking about this clown. But the thing, this, 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 what I, this, what I, this, was, this is what I've been doing, all right? Being that all this crazy shit we seeing in this rap music now, and this hip-hop shit now, I've been saying none of this shit is new. But so what I've been doing is I've been trying to go as much into the beginning as I can before my time, since I was a little child, to teenage years, to, you know, 20s, and so on and so forth. And look what we got here, y'all. Look at this shit. You see it in your face? It's from the Planet Rock video. Now, I could have sworn this was this, this nigga first hit song, first hit video, first to touch the screen. But this is my point, and I don't, I don't want to lose my point. This is what I figured out, y'all. This whole hip-hop shit we seeing now, they've been planning this shit from the gate. All right? They've been planning this. Hip-hop was created to be exactly what you see right now. All this fruit pop stuff you see, all this funny style stuff you see, was always planned to be in this shit. And I'm going to get into it. Like I said earlier, I'm not going to lose focus because... I'm putting things together, but eventually all the dots are going to be connected. Just like I'm telling y'all, I'm going to be doing documentaries, all that. All this shit is right here I'm doing is child's play. I'm just waking niggas up, putting niggas on point so niggas can walk with me and analyze what the fuck is going on with this hip-hop shit and how we all was programmed with that bullshit, stupid-ass, fake-ass cult shit that these niggas been putting on us. And like I said, it's always been a war between rappers and the gangsters. But really, what I'm saying is the rappers that started this hip-hop shit. Because this hip-hop shit was meant to be something else. And what you see on the screen is what it was meant to be. And I'm going to prove it in my opinion. Now, we know hip-hop started off break beats. This man was the DJ. He mastered the art of break beats. He prepared the break beats for, you know, brothers to rap over. But you got to understand where those break beats came from. A lot of those break beats came from disco records. And you got to know about disco. See, that's before a lot of our time. But a lot of you old head niggas, y'all niggas was dancing to disco before rap even started. And a lot of y'all was dead when rap first started. And y'all was little boys, so y'all seen the whole transition. But this is what I learned. Disco... Had a lot of funny style things going on. Studio 54, I'm going to leave it at that. Studio 54, all right? A lot of stuff downtown in the village. You understand? If you don't know about the village, it's the rainbow world, all right? It's always been the rainbow world, but that's not the point. The point of the matter is, from disco, you got to understand, Studio 54 and all those type of weirdo days when they was doing all, every drug was cool. You got to remember, every drug was permitted because it was called partying. You see? And that's why in hip-hop, this nigga always promoted having fun. See, really, when certain people say having fun, man, you could do anything. You understand? Any drug, any sexual activity, anything. For some people, that's what having fun mean. But this is what I, this is what I got to get into. I don't lose my point. Right? Once disco got shut down, the higher ups came together with a plan, and in my opinion, they got this nigga to pull this shit off. When disco was dead, they did a big ritual back in the day where they smashed up all the disco records and all the disco records got closed. Basically, that was America, Ronald Reagan, or a certain era, taking a stand against what was going on in those places, in which was a lot of homosexual activity and a lot of hard drugs was going on in that disco world. So this is my point. In my opinion, the record labels and the high ups got together and they said, we're going to infuse this into something else. All I'm saying is whatever the fuck was done, this man was a part of that fucking conversation. And I'm going to prove it. 
All right? Why is this rainbow in this? Why does this man have all these allegations? And I'm going to prove something else. How was this man able to do all of this in a New York City housing projects? As well as have permission to throw parties, dances in city public housing. So my point is it had to be sanctioned by New York. New York State. You understand? And we also know that Zulu Nation is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Federal government. So one thing we know is everything that this man did was sanctioned and it was known about. And it was might have been okay. Because maybe Bronx River was the breeding grounds which was given the sanction by the city to do what it was doing. Even when it led up to it got crazy. And we, even in the murder days, it probably was always a secret for NY state officials that it was supposed to be a lot of fuck shit in, in that area. And, and it was sanctioned for that. That's why they had it by the river. You know, by the, you know, in the back. That's not my point. My point is this. This man knew shit that we didn't know and that nobody in Bronx River and nobody in, in hip hop knew that nobody knew had a fucking clue. And this man really is the creator of hip hop because he was sanctioned to be that by the fucking government. And the individuals that knew what time it was with this rainbow in this motherfucking video. Because this video was telling us that He's going to be the one to bring this to the rest of the world in the form of fucking hip hop. Now, what does hip hop represent? Hip hop is where anybody could be down. We're supposed to accept anybody for whatever they do. And it's all gravy. If you let this nigga tell it and KRS one, the main niggas focus on building these hip hop temples, always going overseas, doing fuck shit. Just like with Af Africa Bambada, he got a lot of allegations of what he be doing overseas. And you and I know the laws overseas with pedophilia and all that other football shit is, is, is sanctioned. It's cool. And that's why these niggas really be overseas like that. You understand? But we're going to get into the point how this motherfucker right here was sanctioned to do everything he did. See, they knew hip hop was going to be something great and it was going to be control of the youth. See, my point is this. New York State knew that New York youth generation X was going to be something great and dominant. We was going to take over the city and the world. This is why everything that started in New York at that time is still popping to this day. From the fucking jewelry game to the Jordans niggas die for to, the, to whatever you want to call it, nigga. The fucking whip game. We started all that shit in New York City. You understand? This is for the world to know. But somehow the authorities knew that Generation X was going to be very great and they put certain things in the plan. And it was called hip hop. Because you gotta remember the elite, they plan shit 30 to 50 years ahead of time, my nigga. They knew they can control us through music. They needed something to control our minds and our souls and to keep us in place and in pocket. That's why the whole purpose of the Zulu Nation was to what? Stop the gangs and the violence. Because that same gang, the, the same gangs and violence was taking over the city at that time. And I wasn't even born. In the, you know what I mean? When I, I already know, I heard, I heard all the stories of the gangs in the 70s and all that. How niggas was terrorizing shit all up in the Bronx and in Brooklyn and all the five boroughs. But niggas always knew the Bronx was very, very, very wicked. And the Bronx always got busy, laid shit down, and they always were serious brothers in the Bronx. They was the problem in New York City. And that shit had to get calmed down. And this was the nigga who had to calm it down. This who they sanctioned to calm it down. Through rap music, hip hop music, my nigga. So we be dancing, break dancing, writing on shit, but really not paying attention to what the fuck is going on with our future. And while we was caught up in all this shit, guess what came? Crack came. Boom. Fell on us. So now we had hip hop on one hand, and then we had crack. You understand? So that's what I'm trying to tell y'all, man. So for the hypocritical niggas that be like, um, these young niggas, they be getting high on all type of pills. We didn't do pills in our days. They be wearing skinny jeans. We didn't do that in our days. Y'all niggas is fucking lying. Y'all niggas wore tight clothes, tight leaves, tight mock necks. You understand? Tight BVDs. I remember niggas to wear BVD suits outside. For those that don't know, that was a motherfucking a t-shirt and a pair of boxes, but they was in the material of a do-rag and niggas used to wear that whole shit outside. So niggas did a lot of weirdo shit in the fucking early 80s when I was a little boy in the late 70s. So don't get that shit twisted, my nigga. Niggas did a lot of weirdo shit and they was on all type of drugs. These niggas was doing dust. They was doing everything. Don't let them old niggas fucking lie, man. 
You understand? And this nigga right here, they played us, man. Part two coming.